discontent made glorious summer by this son of York, and all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with the victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim-visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the civious pleasing of a lute. But I, that am not shaped for sport of tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking-glass, I, that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph, I, that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up, and that so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I hold by them. Why, I, in this weak piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time and thus to spy my own shadow in the sun, and to scant on mine own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover, to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain, and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous by drunken prophecies, libels, and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other. And if King Edward be as true and just as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about the prophecy which says that G of Edward as the murderer shall be. Dive thoughts down to my soul.